date, this week marks 30 years since the exodus of more than 4 lakh Kashmiri Pandits from the Kashmir Valley as militancy began to peak in 1990 and radical Islamists gave a call to target Hindu minorities. Most were driven out of their homes all of a sudden overnight with few if any belongings. There were brutal targeted killings at the time. Many families lost everything. They lost family members, they lost their homes, their livelihoods and they carry those scars even today. No government has been able to resettle Kashmiri Pandits back home for all these decades. A new film by Vidhu Vinod Chopra, Shikara, whose trailer is playing out on our screens right now, tells the story of Kashmiri Pandits on the big screen, perhaps for the very first time. And joining us here in the studio to talk about that is journalist Rahul Pandita, who's a co-writer uh, of this film, and uh, Niyati Bhatt. She's a PhD student at JNU. She's a Kashmiri Pandit. Her own parents had to flee the Kashmir Valley all those years ago. Thank you to both of you for joining us. Rahul, does it surprise you that it's taken 30 years to tell the story of Kashmiri Pandits in, in mainstream cinema in this way? Well, as far as media is concerned, I, uh, you know, I've been looking at it in, it in hindsight. Um, uh, I've been looking at, uh, uh, you know, the old clippings uh, of uh, newspapers and magazines of about stories that appeared. Uh, there is very little of uh, about Kashmiri pundits uh, because most of the focus was on Kashmir Valley, where a battle was brewing between uh, terrorists, militants, and the Indian security forces. But amidst all this chaos. Uh, the story of Kashmiri Pandits was always relegated to margins. But one would have thought that at least Indian cinema, you know, Bollywood at least rise, rise up to it. Uh, and someone will have the courage to say the story of Kashmiri Pandits as it happened in uh, 1990. But surprisingly, it took 30 years. But now after 30 years, we have uh, made a great effort uh, to tell this story of what happened to Kashmiri Pandits, Kashmiri Hindus in 1990, how their neighbors, and friends who? turned against them. And, and you were among those uh, with your family who had to flee uh, in 1990. Uh, tell us about the film itself, the fact that it's actually taken from real life incidents that you went through, that your family went through at that time. Tell us about some of that. It's a love story between, uh, between, between a Kashmiri Pandit and his wife and uh, set in the backdrop of what happened in Kashmir in 89. It is set in 89 and it goes till 2019, so, you know, 30 years. Um, I was when I was in the screening. I was telling a personal story. You know, my family left uh, Kashmir on 4th April 1990, and uh, we left in a taxi. And as the taxi was moving uh, somewhere near South Kashmir in Kazigund, uh, it had stopped because there was an army convoy coming from the other side. Um, and my father was sitting on the front seat, and uh, me, my sister, and my mother were on the uh, rear seat. There was a man who was coming from the other side. He looked at us, and he knew that we were Kashmiri Pandits who were trying to flee. And in a very menacing uh, gesture, he just raised his hand and he looked at us and he said in Kashmiri, Mariu Bato Mariu, which in die, Kashmir, die, die, die Pandits die. Yeah. Uh, so I said in the screening of the film, I said, I don't know where that man is, but I, today I wanted to tell him that uh, uh, we, have, we have survived and we have survived with resilience, great gumption, and that is what Shikar is about. But unfortunately, many of us have not survived. Uh, my mother, for example, you know, she, my family went through a lot of hardships. Uh, in, in, in those days. The official uh, killing, uh, you know, the number is 700. But I say it runs into tens of thousands because in the first few years of exile, so many Kashmiri Pandits I know, elderly people, died of sunstroke, scorpion bites, uh, depression, uh, diseases which were unknown to us. Uh, all, that is trauma, all that is part of our of film. And how the neighbors, uh, their friends, their colleagues, the viciousness on the streets of Kashmir on 19 January 1990 onwards and before that, the hit list, etc. All are a part of this film. Niyati, let me ask you, you were actually born later. You were, yeah. you were born after your parents had, had left. So what have they told you uh, yeah. uh, about what life was like and what happened uh, when yeah. the exodus took place? I think uh, for me, writing has been a way of uh, sort of, I record all of their stories, whatever they tell me. So both of them were almost my age when they left. And I can't imagine right now just giving up my home and you know, just leaving with just my cell phone and my credit cards in my hand and have to start a new life. So they went through something like this. And it's not just like people uh, run numbers for you, these many died. But the kind, of the kind of damage that it has done to families, to people, to individuals, it's enormous. A lot of people have not recovered. They went into sh severe depression. Some became sch uh, schizophrenic, as we see in Rajesh Jala's film. 
uh, he made a documentary in which the protagonist was from where I lived. He was a neighbor. And he just didn't know what had happened to him. And uh, I mean, people have gone through all of these things. And my parents themselves, they were very young, just started jobs, and suddenly they had to leave. So for them, uh, it was starting over, all over again. Have they uh, ever gone back all these years? So we went back in 2012. That was a seemingly peaceful year, calm for them. And uh, it was absolutely crazy because my mother is from Shopian and she went back to her village and she couldn't spot her house because it was burned down in 1990 and the entire area was encroached upon. So to see her that helpless that I can't even recognize the, f you know, yes, where my, yeah, yeah, exactly. And, but the, another thing was that uh, hun uh, almost a hundred people from Shopian came out to see the daughter who had returned. They recognized their sis uh, her sisters in our faces and uh, like in, they said to my sister, oh, you look like one of the sisters and all of that. So, I mean, was these things a, also uh, happened. Did, did they find that the locals welcomed them back? The locals really welcomed them back because these were the girls and boys that my mom grew up with. They were like brothers and sisters to her. But she also mentioned that the fact that a lot of them, like some of them were collaborators in all of it, right? She recognized the faces, but she couldn't just confront them. Like, uh, so she tells me of the day when she came back home uh, from work and uh, after a few minutes, um, as she entered home, uh, a neighbor called out and said, oh, you have this really long pacha outside your house. Somebody had put up a poster because it was a house of six to seven girls. They had written, you have to leave or uh, you have no idea what we'll do to them. You know, uh, it's interesting that, yeah. you, that you narrated this story because Rahul, one, one of the things we see uh, when we talk about the pain of Kashmiri Pandits is that, is there any way to heal from this? And, uh, you know, while uh, you rightly point out that many people, friends, neighbors, people you knew and grew up with turned collaborators at that time, uh, it's, do you blame the entire Kashmiri Muslim population for what Kashmiri Pandits went through? And some people say that, and unfairly I think, that you know Kashmiri Pandits somehow today see what is happening to Kashmiris today as, for want of a better word, revenge for what they went through. How would you sort of answer that question? I think it's uh, I think it's unfair. Yeah. Uh, the uh, you know in, we should say in no uncertain terms mm -hmm. that uh, the reconciliation between Kashmiri pundits and Kashmiri Muslims is a two-step process as far as I am concerned, and that's what I, we try to show in the film also. First is I always keep on saying this that for us denial is a bigger betrayal yeah. than what happened you to us in 1990. What happened? Most of the Kashmiri Muslims, whether they've taken part in this ethnic cleansing or not. Uh, are today in a denial. You know, they always uh, blame Jagmohan for the exodus of Kashmiri Pandits. So the first step would be to acknowledge the, the pain of Kashmiri Pandits and say, we, listen, we did not do this to you. We did not come out of our home and streets and kill you. But we remained silent or we were complicit. We are sorry about this. That's one. And then, you know, the Kashmiri Pandits also, after 30 years, should get a sense of justice. Mm -hmm. There are terrorists like Yasin Malik or Bitta Karate who are un in jail right now, but they're not in jail for the murder of uh, so, ma so, so many pundits. That's one. The other thing is when Article 370 happened, you know, there was this impression made on TV channels as if all Kashmiri pundits are happy. They might be happy about the fact that 370 has been abrogated. That is their right because they're also Kashmiri, that they have a they stake are, in yeah, the Kashmiri yeah. story. Fair enough. But to say that they see it as revenge, I think is unfair. Even Today, if you go to any Kashmiri Pandit marriage, there are so many Kashmiri Muslim Jews who a Kashmiri Pandit marriage is incomplete without a Kashmiri singer mm -hmm. and the whole, uh, tr tr you know, the tr troupe. There are so many friends who, c who come visiting us. Uh, I keep on telling my friends that, you know, as and when we return to Kashmir, and even if it is a, one of those colonies, you know, resettled colonies, I would like to live with them. There are so many friends who would like to live uh, with me there. So there's absolutely no, it should not be seen as a way that, you know, it is to exact revenge revenge on what happened, what is happening to them. Well, uh, last question to both of you, to Niyati first, that do you think that you could ever go back yeah. uh, and, and, you know, I'm not saying live there yeah. throughout the year, you have, you have a life now in a big yeah. city in Delhi, but would you like to? Would you like to have that option of, of going? Do you think choice? you can? Yeah, who wouldn't want the choice to be yeah. able to go back to their home? Um, I mean, we live here uh, in a limbo, mm. and to have that choice will, will be something really, really tremendous. The governments have not done anything till now. Rehabilitation in Jakti camps is not equivalent yeah. to going back. But, of course, we would like to have that option.
Yeah. Rahul, one last question to you. Uh, in fact, when Viduvanu Chopra spoke about, um, I, I think what he was trying to say was about healing. Um, you had the trolls that came out on Twitter and tried to boy, you know, they had a boycott Shikara hashtag today, but there's a there's a must watch Shikara hashtag that's come back, so that's good. But, um, you know, what would you say, you know, to, to, to them? And are you also worried that somehow Kashmiri Pandits, of whom it's my community too, right. that we've all become sort of pawns, political pawns, and no one really cares about what's actually happening to us, but no one is genuinely speaking up for what, what has happened to Kashmiri Pandits. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a double-edged sword, really. Uh, as I was saying in Ravish's show yesterday, uh, politics is playing on both sides, by speaking about it or by not speaking about it. Uh, as far as this film is concerned, you know, yesterday in, in a TV show, he said that, you know, there, were two, there are two brothers and they should, sorry, they should say sorry to each other by which he did not mean that a victim of an ethnic cleansing should say sorry to a terrorist. But, you know, they've also gone through s some things in life, so perhaps there should be an empathy on the other side also. That is what he meant. But as far as this film is concerned, I, through this channel, I would like to tell my uh, audience, those who are watching this program today, there is absolutely no compromise on the truth of Kashmiri Pandits and what happened to them, how their neighbors, colleagues, friends turned against them. There's absolutely no, no compromise. But both of you believe there is a scope for healing? Yeah. Yes, there absolutely. There is a scope for healing? Absolutely. absolutely. For, for all our communities? Oh, yes. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. Thank you to both of you for coming in Thank tonight you. and talking Thank about you. your stories. And good luck, Rahul, with, with Shikara, which releases on the 7th of February. That's it on the program tonight. Sanket is up next. <laughs>